The Unified Field Theory Named kind by the Einstein, Albert Einstein wanted to prove that the two fundamental forces of the universe, the gravitational force and the electromagnetic force, are the different manifestations of a single field. Gravitational force is a force that attracts any object with mass. Every object, including you, is pulling on every other object in this entire universe. That is called the Newton's Universal Law of Gravitation. Two objects depend upon their masses and the distances between them. Closer the two objects are together, stronger will be the interactions between them. You and the Earth both have mass. Therefore, you pull on the Earth and the Earth pulls on you. However, the Earth's mass is much, much, much larger than yours, so it's enough to keep you on its surface. This force of attraction is given by the forming equation. And then comes the special theory of relativity given by the Einstein. Let's discuss an example to understand the special theory of relativity. Consider a set of two mirrors in opposite direction and a photon of light is bouncing between these two mirrors. Now let's say the distance between these two mirrors is d. The time taken to cover this distance is t. For the simplicity, let this time t equals to 1 second. So, if you have this set of mirrors at rest, the photon covers distance d in 1 second, which gives you the speed of light. And now, remember, speed is the distance per unit time. Now consider another set of the same mirror with the photon of light traveling in the spaceship. This set of mirror also travels with the speed of spaceship in the same direction. Here light has to cover an extra distance in the same time of one second. Let this distance to be capital D and the speed of light capital S to be the capital D per unit time. But the speed of light is experimentally proved to be the constant. So the small s is equal to the capital S that is C. So for both stationary set of mirror and the set of mirror in spaceship, the light is constant. So the speed of light for you is the same wherever you are. Here the time is the variable quantity. Conclusion is that the time slows down when you travel faster and faster. So the faster you travel, the slower the time passes for you. It broke all the traditional understandings of the time as a constant quantity and proved it to be different for different observers. The theory of relativity led to the discovery of many valuable points, the most famous of which is E equals MC squared. And then we have electromagnetic force. Electromagnetism is due to the interactions between the charged particles. In the early 1860s, James Clark Maxwell had produced a set of equations that summarized the electromagnetism. Before Maxwell, electricity and the magnetisms were considered two separate forces. But in 19th, it was clear that these two interactions were fundamentally related. They are both the product of charge. As mass produces gravitational field, charge produces electric field which causes other charge to either attract or repel. The opposite charges will pull each other, on the other hand, the same charges will repel each other. When these charges begin to move, they generate magnetic field which further attracts the motion of other charges. It was also discovered that the charge in magnetic field also generates the electric field. Observing all these facts, Maxwell developed four fundamental equations. Then, it was also discovered that not only the electric and the magnetic field fundamentally the same forces, but that electric and magnetic field could, together, produce a wave. Unification of the two fundamental forces
Albert Einstein was finally able to create the unified field theory in 1929. The unified field equation. We can obtain the unified field equation from the two key equations of gravitation and electromagnetism. Combining these two equations, we get the Einstein's unified field equation. The unified field equation can be simplified a little further. We can do this by reducing all the mathematical terms representing the gravitational field component of the left side into a single vector term. Let's call this term G mu V. G mu V is a vector term containing multiple partial differential equations. For further simplification, we absorb the minus sign into a new constant called the letter K. This is the simplest presentation of unified field equation. This equation shown here is defined as follows. G mu V represents the 10 second order partial differential equation of gravitation for the four dimensional space time world called the gravitational field tensor or the Einstein tensor. Tau mu V is another tensor represent the 6 second order partial differential equation of electromagnetism for the four dimensional space time world called the electromagnetic field tensor or the Maxwell tensor. T mu V is the final tensor representing all the remaining mass or energy of space produced by uncharged matters called the external energy momentum tensor. And K is the constant that includes the gravitational constant and the all other stuff. <laughs> Albert Einstein thought the unified field theory to be completed, but when the quantum theory entered the picture, altered all the scene of the game. Many scientists weren't agree with Einstein's unified field. What does the scientist say? In the meantime, modern physics continues to grow and advance without taking account of Einstein's unifying attempts and, in fact, denying even the possibility of such an attempt being successful. Einstein spent most of his later years unsuccessfully searching for a unified theory, but the time was not ripe. There were partial theories for gravity and the electromagnetic force, but very little was known about the nuclear forces. Moreover, Einstein refused to believe in the reality of quantum mechanics, despite the important role he had played in its development. What is the quantum theory? Quantum theory explains the behavior of the motion of objects at microscopic levels. For example, the behavior of the nucleon, the behavior of the electrons, and the behavior of the light or the photon, and the same type of other stuff. Before the Max Planck, it was believed that the energy travels in a continuous manner. Then, Max Planck proposed a theory called the Planck's quantum theory. In his theory, he told that the light or energy travels in the form of discrete units or packets called the quantum, or in case of light, a photon. When there are two waves of slightly different wavelengths, the places where the peaks line up make the bigger wave, while the other regions are cancelled out. The result is that the regions where we have waves are separated by the regions nothing at all. If we add a third wave, the region where the wave cancel out get bigger and the peaks, peaks get bigger still with the wave variance becoming narrower. If we keep adding the waves, we can make a wave packet or a photon that was explained by the Planck's quantum theory. This idea of Planck's was used by the Albert Einstein in the explanation of black body radiation. Using Planck's idea, Albert Einstein explained the behavior of the light in black body radiation got the Nobel Prize in 1921.
Planck's idea was in the basics of the quantum theory. Planck's idea was further explained by the Rubelai who gave the equation for the relation of the wavelength of an object with its momentum. Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle is one of the revolutionary steps toward the development of quantum physics. It says that you can never know simultaneously the exact position and exact speed of an object. Uncertainty is often explained as a result of measurements that the active measuring in object's position changes its velocity or vice versa. But the real region is much deeper and more amazing. The uncertainty principle exists because everything in the universe behaves like both a particle and a wave at the same time. In quantum mechanics, the exact position and the exact speed have no meaning. To understand this, we need to think about what means to behave like a particle or a wave. Particle, by definition, exists in a single place at a single time. We can show it by graph by showing the probability of finding an object at a particular place, which looks like a spike. 100% at a specific position and zero everywhere else. Waves, on the other hand, are disturbances spread out in space like a ripple covering the surface of the pond. We conclude the identified features of the wave pattern as a whole. Most importantly, its wavelength, which is the distance between two peaks or two valleys. But we can't assign it a single position. It has a good probability of being at lots of different positions. Wavelength is essential for quantum physics because an object's wavelength is related to its momentum. A fast moving object has a loss of momentum which corresponds to a very short wavelength. A heavy object has a loss of momentum even if it's not moving very fast, which again means very short wavelength. This is why we don't know the wavelength of an object. If you toss a baseball up here, wavelength is billionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a meter, far too tiny to ever detect. Wavelength of small objects like atoms and electrons are big enough to measure in the physics experiments. So if we have a wave, we can measure its wavelength and thus its momentum. It has no position. We can know a particle's position very well, but it don't have wavelength so we don't know its momentum. To get a particle both with its position and momentum, we need to mix two pictures. To make a graph, it has a wave but very small area. So how can we do this? By mixing waves of different wavelengths, it's giving a quantum object some probability of having different momentum, as I have explained it earlier well. To make a smaller quantum object with both its wave and particle nature, to accomplish this we have to lose certainty about the both position and momentum. The position is respected to a single point there is good probability of finding it within some range of a center of wave packet. And we make it by adding lots of wave which means there is some probability of finding it with momentum corresponding to any one of those. So both the position and the momentum are now uncertain. And the uncertainty is connected. If you want to reduce position uncertainty by making a smaller wave packet, you need to add more waves which means a bigger momentum uncertainty. If you want to know the momentum better make a bigger wave packet means a bigger position uncertainty. This is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. The further development in quantum physics led towards the discovery of the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force. The strong nuclear force. The smallest particle of this universe is quark. There are total six flavors of the quarks. Up, down, string, charm, top, up quark have partially positive charge while the down quark have partially negative charge. Up and the down quarks are less massive but are the fundamental of all, while the other four are massive but rare. These four split up to form up and the down quarks. We know that a neutron is made up of one up quark and two down quarks, while a proton is made up of two up quarks and one. Mesons are made up of two quarks that are unstable together. An up quark is made up of plus two over three charge, while 
a down quark is made up of minus one over three charge. So proton has plus one charge while neutron has mathematically no charge. When protons and the neutrons are come closer to each other, they exchange their mesons. Due to this exchange of mesons, a strong electrostatic force of attraction is created between these two protons and the neutrons. That easily overcomes the electrostatic repulsion between two or more positively charged protons. That is called the strong nuclear force. The weak nuclear force. Without it, the sun would not shine, we would not have elements like plutonium and radium, we would not have carbon-14 dating even. All these things require one particle to turn into another particle through particle decay. Weak nuclear force is called weak because it operates within a teeny tiny 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 radius, about 0.1% of a diameter of a proton. Whenever a neutron comes closer to a neutrino, a positive W boson will travel from neutrino to that neutron. The neutrino, having lost the positive W boson, becomes the negatively charged, turning into an electron. And positive W boson turns the down quark into an up quark, turning the neutron into a proton. The electrostatic force of attraction between the proton and the electron within the nucleus is called the weak nuclear force. Complexity in unified field theory can easily be understood by the fact that the classical mechanics no longer explains the behavior of the objects micro level. In the same way, quantum mechanics also don't explain the objects at micro level. Both are totally incompatible. Or three fundamental forces, electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force have long been explained by a single theory called the standard model. Here, here comes the gravity. As a barrier, gravity doesn't fit into the equation. Everything in this universe is connected.